Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another edition of Real of Dreams on ACTN. I'm Steve David, I'm your host. Um, today, I want to go down memory lane and talk about the resurgence of football in St. Patrick. Uh, I think we, St. Patrick, which was so prominent in providing us with good footballers, is kind of all forgotten and sponsorships is not like it used to be back in the glory days with with Shell and Texaco and BP Palaseco and all this. So I had to dig up a couple people who has a lot of knowledge on, on, on this situation that would help me address this on this program. So let me take time to introduce um, Devnish Paul better known as Piney. Welcome to Seth Devnish. Thank you. Nobody knows you as Devnish, so I better <laughs> let him know. This is Piney. And Piney was uh, one of our, our three goalkeepers that went to Haiti in, in, on the 1973 squad. And so, glad to have you. And uh, next to Piney is Arthur Sanderson. And what are you famous for, Arthur? Welcome to the set. I'm an all rounder. <laughs> all rounder? <laughs> yes, I'm, a, I'm what you will call a, a community vibrant activist uh, in issues that I think involve people and uh, children, most of all, young people. Yeah. Good. So, you is exactly the person we need because, like myself and Finey, we, we were on the field and trying to make things happen when you were off the field trying to make things happen as well. Community stuff. So we want to get, we want to interject some, some life into our sponsorships and the people who can help um, bring this back in, in the St. Patrick area because God knows we need it and this, this country is, is too northerly uh, pushed and not, and the south is always forgotten. So um, I would we will sit down like we have in a discussion and talk about the old days and, and, and what used to happen so our new sponsors or our present sponsors can get ideas of what used to happen and how, we can, how they can be part of this big planning that, that we want to see before we ride out into the sunset. So um, I would give you had a, a chance to lay the foundation. Um, well, thank you very much, Steve, and uh, to the wider community and your viewing audience. Uh, thank you for the privilege and sitting here with you to talk not only about football, but sports in general. And mm -hmm. it is important to understand, first of all, that sports is an industry. And, um, and there are many facets in this industry that can create opportunities. And this world is changing rapidly. And the opportunities that present itself are sometimes hidden as it relates to sports in Trinidad and Tobago, I would say, Trinidad and Tobago. Um, we in the county of St. Patrick Many years ago, the young children of today do not know about the excitement and the camaraderie that existed in sports, especially in football of yesterday. Because sometimes when I speak with my children, they say, oh God, Pops, we ain't know nothing about that. You could show us something, and then I go to my archive, and I bring out some things that they would actually see, you know? Um, and, and, and sometimes when I show them a field that used to have the greatest clash of the giants in Southern football, when you had North versus South, mm -hmm. and, um, and the buses rolled from the North and came to Faisabad, and the communities from Point Forte, Palo Seco, Faisabad, or a pooch, Cedrus, Ikakas, Irene, 
Journey to Apex, which was one of the pristine grounds, or Journey to Civic Center, which was a then Ma which was Mahika Oval, pristine grounds. You wonder where all these people came from. But the excitement and the camaraderie then was something that have, we have lost, you know? But I always believe that the experience of yesterday can return once proper thinking and proper planning go into, into, in, in, into, into, um, into action. And I've been watching your program for some time, very quietly, very quietly, and I say, Steve has a point. Steve, need, Steve needs help. And um, we have been doing our thing in Faisabad, and at a later time during the program, I will tell you what we have been doing in Faisabad. But it is important for the corporate citizen to understand that the corporate citizen, depending on what they are involved in, needs the community, they need the people. Um, whether you sell soft drink, whether you sell biscuits, whether you sell coals, whether you sell stamps or print postage, print paper, you need the community because that is what keeps your engine going. And sometimes I ask myself, you know, it may be a, a critical statement, but it is a statement, whether nationalizing our oil company was really to the benefit of the community. Because when you have one national community, you have a lot of responsibility with that one company having to take care of all the communities. But in, in the older days, and I wish it can be returned, the older days had glory days and, and there were benefits. When Apex, they looked at the community of Faisabad, TPD, they looked at the community of Palaseco, Separia, Irene, Santa Flora, Texaco. They looked after the community of Point of Pier. They looked after the community of Forest Reserve. Shell. They looked after the community of Point Forte and its environs and Lake Asphalt. They looked after the community of La Brea and Vance River and those areas. And if you would remember, sometime we, we spoke, it is something that I've been toying with for some time, that we create an organization called SALT. What is SALT? S is for Shell, A is for Apex, L is for Lobre, Lake Asphalt, T is for TPD, and by combining these old companies, their name, they must always live on. We come up with SALT, and we are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. We are the salt. There was a time when St. Patrick could have produced a Trinidad and Tobago football team. We have no, we have no apologies about that. We were just good. There were one or two from the north. They were good too, but we were better. And camaraderie in rivalry is good. It's, it's healthy, you know. We cannot do what the the, 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 the corporate citizens in the East-West Corridor or even Central, we can't do what they do in, in the production capacity, but we can do best what we can do in the St. Patrick or so Southern area. Oil is our business. We don't really, as people, produce the oil, but we live on the oil. God put us on a spot of land where the natural resources is right below us, you know, and there are benefits that can be derived for all. But the precious asset of any community, once you put a proper planning into perspective, are the people and the community that can come from that. It is a very good discussion, a lot of thinking, and my good colleague here can tell you his glory days with some of the players that we, we grew up with, you know? Yeah, fine. What you know about... Uh those glory days. Well, uh, well, first, morning, I'm uh, glad to be here, uh -huh. right, and uh, to share my views and talk about the past and the glory days. Faisalabad is where I arrived from, okay. right? And as Mr. Sanderson saying, a while ago about Seoul, I remember the days with SAFL and you see, the football that, or the events that we used to have in Faisalabad at that time 
was quicker than football at the apex apex CPD because BP and was not. But um, we have to go about these events in such a way that um, we have to, uh, I, I can't find the word in it, but it's a sport, the football and the cricket is what really had the community at, at hand. And um, we have to get involved. We have to play. But the good thing about Pfizer is that the talent and the skill we was um see I, I want to really do you remember we used to call Pfizer bad when when at one point when we say we go in Pfizer bad we're gonna play if we're gonna play Apex, you know. Right. We never say Pfizer bad, you know. Right. We always refer to and as I the re company name. And I remember yeah. people walking from point from right. from one o'clock to reach Pfizer Apex. And that time you started to play four o'clock games. Right. Right. And um what happened is that all these things come and pass. And we're trying to do something back in, in Pfizer about true sport, true football. And it's not as I was telling you before the in, in interview, is that um, we're trying to get the people involved, but getting them involved is a hard task for the youth now. So going back to Mr. Sanderson and I, as I mentioned to you earlier on, we fought already you know, on, a, on a long journey. We here for years, and the fight that we, we, we fought is that um, we became friends up to now, and we create environments of people or teams or, or clubs in Faisalabad. But see, Arthur Sanderson in Faisalabad, where the sport is concerned now, is that um, we cannot go back in the days of the glory with the youth that we have here right now. Because they, as I mentioned before, they do want to hear nothing about the past, those times. And um, this is what we're trying to do, to bring back the sport in the area, and in the St. Patrick area, or in the Maica, and whatever it is. But we need to have support in the sense of, not only playing, you know, but after you play, is where we're going. But you say uh, we, we can't afford to bring the youth. The youth and they is, is the opportunity for them. They, if they don't have the opportunity with the support from the community or the sponsor, what do you want them to you, do? You, you see, you're creating the environment for them you now. Well, okay. So you, we you need the sponsor to help you, us do that. Right, but when we create the environment, right, today, mm -hmm. I was, I, I encountered, sorry, but today we create the environment for you. For them and they, we put everything in place but at the end of it at the end of it when they leave here right is where they're going all right and help me to explain this um Arthur. if what we created now for these youth is not what we used to have right because we used to have it coming from the big guns like well, explain that. Right. Well, this this uh, this is this is where planning comes into right. perspective. But I want to I want to um, I want to educate mm -hmm. the wider community right. and some people in Pfizer bad, and maybe you too, Steve. Apex was not only a company. Apex was also a village. Right. But the village was so well planned. And the things that came out from the people who live in the village mm -hmm. that Apex, the name, overshadowed Faisabad, right. the wider tongue. And, and again, we, we must go back to history. You see, if you don't trace your past, you may make mistakes in the future that the past would have taught you how to avoid those mistakes. Mm -hmm. Apex was considered one of the most outstanding community as it relates to leadership. Because when Apex came into, Apex the company came to Trinidad and settled in Faisabad, 
the general manager of Apex in those days, Mr. Hicklin. He was selected by the Governor General to be the representative for St. Patrick West. In those days, you could not have voted for your representative. They were selected by the governor. And out of all the British companies in South, in St. Patrick, Apex General Manager was the one who represented St. Patrick West. So that gave him a sort of an elite leadership role on, in, on issues of oil and on issues of direction with the other British companies. So it is important to understand that. Now, anybody getting involved in the community would ask yourself, what do you have in it for them? Because business, in, business is not a thing for, for, for glory and friendship. Business is about making money. And the government in itself has a role to play with respect to assisting corporate sponsors who would want to get involved in community development as it relates to sports. But it must not be a handout situation because I've seen sports destroy itself when they just wait for the, for the bag, you know? And then you find there are people who only want to remain in office because the bag will come and there will be questionable spending as it relates to when the bag of money arrive at the doorstep mm -hmm. of that organization. I've seen organizations crumble. And I always believe that there's a concept in matching. If you need $100 and you need the corporate sponsor to sponsor $100, match it. So it starts from on the ground level. And the ground level will tell you if you have a plan with respect to what you want to do. For instance, in the SALT, if the A aspect has a proposal that may cost $100,000, we must show within that $100,000 proposal the ability to earn half of that. And if the sponsor want to match that, the government should give that sponsor some form of tax relief or whatever. So it encourages it. It, 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 it has a... Uh, 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 what you will call a uh, domino effect. It has a domino effect. And that domino effect, at the end of the day, the only beneficiary will be the country. Okay, let me, let me, let's hold for a second right there because we need to take a break and we'll come back and talk about the planning for this thought and future. So, excuse me, be right back. Within the SAFL, football, as I was saying before, the sort of thing that happened within the SAFL, like the system or the planning and the, the team structure and all that. When I sit now and I talk to people, who I explain to them about the past again, like other. Why I go and try to talk about the new time? Okay, welcome back to you. Okay, guys, so pick up where we left off here. Um, let's talk about exactly, you know, the shell and the shell turned to civic, and then we had the apex, and the apex turned to what? I don't even know. Apex turned to TPD. TP, no? BP. No. Apex turned to BP. Yeah. So we had BP Faisabad and BP Palaseco. That's right. right. And then BP And then BP, to BP, well, before BP, before apex, or before BP came in, there was TPD. TPD, right. TPD was before, and then when BP bought over Apex and TPD, it, it became BP Faisabad and BP Paliseco. Paliseco. And yes. then Forest was always? Forest was always Texaco. Texaco. Yeah. And then Texaco and sold Texaco to Trintoc, and then, you know, all this selling made things change. Right, okay. You know? Okay. But um, I'm saying from the business aspect, Companies come, companies go. We can't stop that. But 
the foundation that was laid was something to continue. A field was created. A field of dreams was created. We had, from in my era, you had two men from Faisabad who led Trinidad in relation to football. You had Bursi Grell, who led Trinidad. He was from Forest Reserve, Faisabad. Right. And you had Selvin Moran, right. who was from Forest Reserve, Faisabad. Right. And then you also had good players like Raymond Moral. I remember Googling just recently and seeing both of you all, Steve David from, 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 from Shell Days and Raymond Moraldo from, from Forest Days, right. an opposing team in the United States of America. You all got a platform right. that, you, that you, 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 you started from the cradle, was from within your community, mm -hmm. and you aspire to international prominence, mm -hmm. you know? W in education, some people in some school they believe that education is what you write in the, what you get in the book, as if it's a science and physics and mathematics and all the languages. No, no, no. There's another aspect of education. And some, 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 some children, they are not really versed in the academia aspect of education. But technically, you can rival them. They're good. That is what is missing. I can talk about Faisabad. You can speak about uh, Point Forte. Devnish can also speak about uh, Faisabad. But there are also those who can speak about Palo Seco, Separia, Irene. And S-A-L-T, like I said, S is shell. If there was no shell, there was never going to be a Point Forte Civic, civic Center. Right. And as a matter of fact, there was never even going to be a Tiche or, Mahaika. is it Mahaika? Mahaika? There was never going to be a community of Mahaika. So we must say thanks to Shell for having the foresight in planning Point Forte, not only as a community, but setting the infrastructure where the people within the community can show their talent. And by extension, the schools can benefit from the talent that is exposed and the infrastructure that they put there. And one of the, 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 the infrastructure that I see presently, there's a development going on there, is, is Mahaika Oval, mm -hmm. right? In Faisabad, we also had the same thing. Thanks for Apex. If there was no Apex, there was never going to be Apex a community. Mm -hmm. And the Apex a community has now been sort of overshadowed with a smaller name called Crest Camp. But we must never forget, Apex is the bigger community of Crest Camp. And Apex is a part of Faisabad. If there was no Apex, as a matter of fact, they might, not, they might not even have a Labor Day. Because it's from Faisabad, the history of the trade union was built. So there's a lot of things about in the S-A-L-T that we can talk about. The L, which is Labre, Lake Asphalt. If there was no lake asphalt, you know, no vessel, they wasn't even going to have a sobo. The communities developed around the entrepreneurship of those who came and invested in our country. And infrastructure was, and infrastructure was, were built. Community grounds were built. Houses were built. Businesses arose out of that because once there's a population and there's road connecting, the entrepreneurs see the opportunities and they come, you know? Suddenly everything has stopped in, this, in, in St. Patrick. The clock has stopped. Yeah, but in, in addition, Biney moved to California with Caroni, yeah. who was in the SFL, okay. and then that built. Tell us a little bit about uh, your, uh, not, the, not your vision, your, your interaction with Caroni under the SFL and in the same soul. Um, well, with, in, right? with the SFL, I was a member of the Forest Reserve. Forest Reserve first, right? First football yeah. team. But before I reached the Forest Reserve, I passed to Juventus. Okay. That is the club team in Faisabad that I um, really promote and did a lot of Faisabad. And we end up with Forest Reserve playing 
alongside several Marine, the Marine brothers, right. and even Bushy Grill, Olin Thomas and Alan Cupid. But at those times, I have to sit on the bench because Alan Cupid and Olin Thomas was <laughs> that sort of player. But um, in the SCFL now, after playing for Forest and playing Caroni, playing your team, I don't know if you remember the game. We played them in a knockout final at Forest Reserve, where Forest Reserve beat Caroni one day. And I was playing for Caroni. And you were playing for Caroni. You do remember that. <laughs> and at the end of the game, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Andrews, yeah. who lived close to me in Pepper Village, was here for the game because he was more or less a scout for Caroni. And after beating Caroni, at the end of the game, he come across, came across to me and pointed the finger. And the other thing I know, the next morning, I saw a green and yellow vehicle in front of my gap in Pepper Village. That's all Mr. Andrews came down. So let me know that I go into Caroni. Recruit you. One time, well, at that time, after the game, he just, he didn't tell me anything, but he was annoyed and pointed the finger. And the next thing I know, as I said it before, I'll carry the vehicle coming in front of my door. Right. Take me up to, to, to Caroni in the SFF to book. Go up to Caroni, sit down for the whole day, waiting to hear what, what, what is going on. So at one point, I tell him, I say, here, I'm ready to go home here. He says, how are you going to walk in? <laughs> well, you, you, how are you going to mind walking? And that was the avenue. Created. That was the avenue that it, Forest Reserve mm-hmm. and the Pfizer by the Juventus created for me. Right. And I end up in Caroni, where I met myself, Steve Baby, and a lot of other players. And um, within the SAFL football, as I was saying before, the sort of thing that happened in SFL, like the system or the planning and the, the team structure and all them. When I sit now and I talk to people, I explain to them about the past again, like Arthur. Why I going quite there? Talk about the new times. Do I mention to them we had a um, we play five forward, two midfielder, and three in the back. They want to know what type of football. This is madness I talking about. <laughs> but SAFL was one of the for me one of the, the leading league in Trinidad football at that time. Whether it's SFL, NFL, QSFL, and all the things. And all the players, all the great players for me, came out during that time. And it's, um, but not all the good players. All of, all, don't let them sound like we we taking <laughs> credit for well, everything. I mean, <laughs> we set the it, it tone will ha- time. It will have a, a have few it. outside. There's a lot of great players now. Because... Yeah, no. But I remember when you go to the north, or oh, some of the players, the old players, they, say, they call you man from south. Yeah, but listen, again, north had great players. They had, uh, you're talking about a uh, ton load of them. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we have yeah. ton load. But it had, it had no one team or no one club, right? That was good? No. Malvern, Maple. No, 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 no it was good, man. but had the amount of players oh, coming from nice. one club. Oh, yeah, I understand. What you're right? Okay. So, Civic now, when you talk about SCFL, so um, PUSFL playing Civic, right? It's not SCFL because all the players come from there. All right, but but let, let's get into, uh, because this, we could talk about this. Who oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into, uh, with, with Arthur, about some some planning or, or, or to open not only sponsors' eyes, but kids as well to, to look forward, something to look forward to, because it's a dream, mm-hmm. something to start dreaming. Let's talk about some of the things that we can do to like, build like, this kind of yeah. foundation we have back. The first thing young, young people normally look forward to mm-hmm. in getting involved is the question, what is it for them? Very good question. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, I, I take my hat off for them. 
Because in our days, when we used to play, we never used to ask, what is it in the first? We just know we got an opportunity right. and made best of the opportunity. And we saw what came out of it. But time have changed. Right. They are now asking, what is it in this for them? And many of the young people today are unemployed. And I do believe there is a responsibility of corporate citizens to promote young people who are constructively involved within their community and even nationally. Right. Because it is an incentive to create at the ground level their involvement in developing their community. Churches and all used to be involved. Because I remember even sports, in the wider aspect of sports in the South, the Catholic Church was so organized with, with uh, entity called SPE, from the St. Patrick aspect, the St. Patrick Assembly of Youth. And one of the greatest sports that you would ever see, events that you would ever see, talking about sports in general, races and high jump, and, was SPE sports. What it had in it for them? Scouts were there looking for good athletes that they would take back. But you didn't know that scouts were, the term scout wasn't relatively um, hidden in the agenda of the event. Today, you have scouts who leave the United States and come even today to look for, for players. But it is being done in a very hidden way because the young people, they do not know. It is not marketed. They, they don't have the opportunity to present themselves. So we have to go back to the board. The planners have to go back to the board. And I am also saying, a country cannot develop without proper planning. Mm -hmm. The stars in our country can't be lawyers and economists and, and uh, what do we have, you know, those technocrats that believe that they are the developer of our country. Where are the planners? Where are the, planet? Where are the technologists? Where are those individuals who really will sit and look at the future of a country? And that is where we have to go. We have to look at the future of our country. So regardless of at the partisan level, Regardless, even if it change, the, the structure is there that they have to continue to work with. And, I, and, and as I talk about the infrastructure, if you come to Faisabad, and I'm dealing with the A aspect in SALT, and I can even speak about the S aspect in SAF in the salt, or even the L and the T aspect. Let's take the T. You go to Palaseco today, and look at the pristine infrastructure that was left for the development of the human being, whether you be old, whether you be young. The infrastructure was used by all, whether it's for walking, running, cricket, football. It will be madness and sadness to see what is taking place there. Mm -hmm. You come to Faisabad, and you look at Apex Ground. The pristine ground that developed individuals who are now millionaires in the outside looking for uh, uh, having developed a talent that was that was beneficial to them and even beneficial to the country because I remember when listening to a football I think it was Cosmos playing somebody and they told was it you were playing for Cosmos or Raymond Morales somebody from the south was playing and Pile. That's a man. Pile was looking at Warren Archibald and said at the time, Warren Archibald was one of the most lucrative player that he has ever seen. And where he came from? Point Forte. The S in the SALT. And Warren was discovered by who? Don Basil Ma Ma Matthews. And Warren was also trained by Uta and, and is, is Esubio, those Brenner. guys? Brunner. Uta and then Brunner. And Brunner, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So there was something in the planning aspect that nurtured the talent that made individuals who were scouting see this is good talent that has an economic benefit for whoever it would be at the end of the tunnel. The whole thing about it is that when young people come now and they ask, what is it? In it for them, you can say, once we are organized and things have settled, look at Steve. That wasn't it for him. You can be like him. And there are many, many opportunities 
if planned properly, and we have to move like Trinidadians and Tobagonians, we have to move like Trinbagonians. We can't be moving like an Irish in Trinidad and Tobago. You can't be moving like a Pakistanis in Trinidad and Tobago. You have to move like a Trinbagonian. And I take my hat off to the Jamaicans. A Jamaican is a Jamaican wherever in the world you go, you know. We must pattern good things, you know. And I say that this opportunity, this period in this country, is the best opportunity we can use now in the quietness of this pandemic to begin to reorganize, mobilize, and go forward as a region that can set the example for the country. Taking my mind back, I remembered journeying to Port of Spain some years ago and talking to a good friend of mine called Cornel, Alvin Cornel. And the discussion was with Alvin was to bring back the glory days of the old men who were the runners at the time in a north versus south, in the same S-A-L-T aspect, you know? And um, we were planning it to execute it, and the COVID come in. Right. But even talking with Alvin, Alvin too was, he was, he was fit. He, he saw something in it. Mm -hmm. And this concept is not for St. Patrick only. This concept is even for Port of Spain. It can, it can serve within the various counties of Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have to take a break. But when we come back, I'm going to be the kid who you have to motivate to be part of this and the sponsor who you have to motivate to put their money in and support this effort and so we can tell them what we want to happen and what we expect from them. All right? Sure. You'll just be right back. Some of the technology might have changed. Even the personality of individuals and parents might have changed. But the concept must not change. Right. We must adapt to the concept. And if this time creates certain situations that requires additional assistance. We must adapt. Okay, uh, viewers, welcome back. Um, so, guys, like we said, the sponsors are listening, and the, the young kid who has the dream is listening to us here now as to how is this going to work on the ground, on, in, on paper? So, or, or how is it going to make it happen? Make it happen for us. We all hear it. And barbershop discussion, so I don't even have to ask the question. So, well, you want fine. Right. fine. <laughs> Deputy, right. what, you, what do you think? You want to think or you want Arthur to go? Yeah. Arthur, go first. <laughs> So it used to be even in school or <laughs> let, me give a, let, me, let, me, let me give you a, a, a yeah. joke, which is part of the discussion. Right. I love football. So do my brother. We love football. Mm -hmm. But the only thing that my father used to have uh, that mind us to go to school was pigs and cattle. Mm -hmm. And when he hear that we were playing football, he used to pick a go of a whip <laughs> and come on the field. <laughs> That is the type of thing that we had to endure yep, for I sports, yep. you know? And most of us, many of us, our parents couldn't see a future in sports because they thought that being a lawyer, a shoot and tie around your neck and a briefcase in your hand was the job. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know? How can we start? We must begin by mobilizing and we have, got, we have to get those community grounds active again active by encouraging individuals who have administrative minds to create small leagues that could be managed properly. But we have that going already, kind of. In some communities, yeah. they exist. In others, they do not. Right. But there must be a bridge between the, in football, in the football aspect, there must be a bridge between the National Football League what you call Trinidad and Tobago Football Association, TTFA. Yes, yeah, yeah. TTFA. Yeah. TTFA yeah. 
and the community leagues. Because sometimes you have good players who get selected for the national level. And I think there is some, some little clause in their contract that tells them they can't go and play for the community league, you know? And yeah. they have them scared, but it's the community that grew up the child. And it's the community that go out and support the child in order to see him kick or play or score that goal that he know that he has the ability to do. So the TTFA must now begin to recognize the community and build that bridge. It has to start from the top. But it, it, is, it is built. It's not, it's not like the TTFA is that you can't play minor league at all. It's like if they're coming up to some big tournament, World Cup preliminary, they would say, slow down from that. Right. Okay. So this, 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 this is understandable. Yeah. This is understandable. But somewhere in my discussion with young players who were being looked at as talent for the national level, they keep saying, well, TTFA tell us they'll play in no minor league. So that, that, psych, that, that psychological barrier must be made very clear at the national level. That's one. Two, sports in school must be a subject. Clear, it must be a subject. Well, you, they should bring back sports into the elementary school. Not sports, football especially. I, I'm saying sports. Into the elementary school because we used to have that. Yes. We don't have that. And all of these things that were good in the past suddenly is no longer on the curriculum. So, so edu the, the, minist the Ministry of Education the Ministry of Education must begin to review its entire curriculum. And even schools that are managed by churches must also review their curriculum. Well, let's, let's talk about that so they understand. Yeah, because I'm, I'm saying so they understand. In elementary school, we had the schools playing against each other. And, and then at the end of the season, they have the guy called Babsy Daniel used to run around yeah. to all the schools and give a little, um, a little small camp on um, how to head and how to trap and all that kind of thing. And then he selects an all-star team in St. Patrick. Mm -hmm. And that St. Patrick team plays San Fernando, which is Victoria. Yeah. And then they, 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 play a, they make that into one group, a scout team, that would play with North because North will have done the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we could pick an elementary national team if we wanted to. Is that the kind of thing you expect? Yes, you want yes, to yes, 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 yes. My question is, why have they removed it? Well, now, it, again, it's always about the dollars and cents. <laughs> so, and, uh, of course, the educational system is different from when we grew up. We grew up, you can jump on a bicycle and you can ride to San Fernando. You can't do that no more. No. So, you know, things have changed. Yeah, but the season might have changed. Some of the technology might have changed. Even the personality of individuals and parents might have changed. But the concept must not change. Right. We must adapt to the concept. And if this time creates certain situation that requires additional assistance, we must adapt. And that is why I say anything one does, it must be constant planning and review. Right. You, do, you don't just get rid of it. There must be planning and review. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, when Finey talk about the car that come down and tell them they want them up at Caroni, you right. think that car just came there on its own? Behind the scene, somebody who, some individuals were speaking and saw the benefit and the asset not to them, but to the bigger, the company. So let me devil's advocate for you. Yes. In when we had Shell and BP Pfizer and BP Pfizer and Texaco and Lake Asphalt, those were big companies that was running. Now, who are those companies in the St. Patrick area that can do that? 
Well, we're not only talking about St. Patrick, but we can talk about Central. Yeah. But for the St. Patrick aspect, I know in Point Forte, I don't know how vibrant they are, but there's a business, a, com a business organization. Um, I think they score Atlantic this. LNG. No, mm. we're not dealing with individual organizations now. Let's deal with the the infrastructure, the business infrastructure okay. that would represent mm -hmm. those individuals who may be a part or member of that of that organization. Okay. The, some call them Chamber of Commerce. I think it's called the Southwest Chamber in Point Forte, where I presume the business sector would be a member of. In Faisabad, they have the Faisabad Chamber. So you deal with the chamber, you deal with the organization. And if they are true, if they are true as it relates to why they were set up as business entity, then you would prove then we can now say they really represent what they are. No, 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 Arthur. Because like Fine like Fine said, the vehicle pull up, we need you. Yes. That is Caroni. Yes. Okay. So Shell would say, I need so and so and Shell would pull them in. If you fight about the same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we need the companies to hire these young players. Right. Well, what I'm saying is, uh, I always believe in structures. We are just the chambers. How the you chamber can make that happen? The, the chamber can adjust now their members. Meaning who? The members of the chamber, I presume, let's say point forty, Atlantic LNG may be a member of the chamber, Royal Bank may be a member of the chamber, Gopis may be a member of the chamber, right? In Faisabad, you may have... Nimchan Studio being a member, Ken Electrical being a member, you know, because the business sector that exists in, the, in, in different communities differ, not only by size, but also by way of contribution. Yeah, but contribution. It, it, it has to be more direct. No, no. You deal with the chamber, and then the chamber would refer to the company. And the company now, if they have an interest, would then respond back to the chamber and the chamber will then respond back to us you well, see once you begin to go directly to individual companies we don't have the manpower no 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 and i'm saying, not saying we have to do that i'm saying just like we we didn't have to go to shell and and apex and all these people they just did it because yeah. they were run by the foreigners mm -hmm. the englishmen mm -hmm. who was very much football oriented and, Sports, and yeah. that was in their mind. Yeah. And these were the, the experts were the guys who really set our structure up for us. Yeah, but Steve, we don't know what negotiations that those companies held maybe with the government of the day. Okay. That if they put out 50 million, that they get a tax break of 40 million. Okay. We so don't know. You see, there are a lot of, that's why I say the planning aspect of what we want to has do. To be it has to be a number of, of organizations, structures. They must get involved. Otherwise, it will fail. Otherwise, it will just be temporary. No, but I'm saying we don't go to them now. They're listening to us now. So right. let them make the effort is what I'm saying. Well, our in. effort is now to introduce them to a, with a proposal okay. of what we want to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And All let's right. see where it goes from there. What you, what you say, Rani? No, yeah, and let them do the calling, the call thing, and um, from there, we'll go from there. But if I sit back here, people will call. No, you're making the effort too, you know, but you're, I mean, as you say, they, they're listening and they're understanding, so they will um, call us because people now in Central, by where I am at present, the outer sport because the whole industry in the back there. It just split up and the people telling you straight up sports is no benefit for them. It bring in nothing for the company. So you have to actually beg for you know, in order to get something from them. But yes, they don't hear anything about sports. Well I, I am sitting here now and saying I am asking the Head of these companies right. to get together and say, hey, 
you know what, we dropping the ball. Let's do something about the youth in our community and try to put them on the right path. So let's form a league, or let's start putting our money into a league in the um, this SFL, Southern Football League, and try to make this happen. I think if that's how it happens, don't you think? Well, let me let me. <laughs> I was trying to stay away from a certain direction, mm -hmm. but this is a field of dream. This is the best time if the Minister of Finance is listening to put in his budget some form of incentive to corporate citizen within a specific county mm -hmm. that can invest well, I agree. in some I agree aspect of sports. Yeah, I would agree with that. And yep. the companies now once that is there, they, has a respons they have a responsibility right. to now act because it has something in it for them. Right. And they are also playing a role in the development of the community mm -hmm. where they live right. or actually where they, where, where they are doing business. Right. Right? Look, I always say, I've been to countries where people are interviewed for a job and I was at a specific business at the time, and I was asked to sit and listen and observe how they conduct this aspect of interviews for a specific job. And two questions was asked. One, are you involved in your community? If you are involved, what? is the group or organization. And you know where many of them got the jobs? They were involved in Cubs or Scouts, Girl Guides or Brownies, which is an internationally, internationally recognized uh, organization. organization, right? And they picked them. You know today, many people get jobs. And the backdrop of their job have nothing to do with what they do to help build their community or society. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, must, we have to look at that. Because we don't have that exist anymore like the Why? CIO and the Why? And that is what help kills, that is what help kills the social fabric of a community. When the institutions that are supposed to be there to assist in building the community, when you kill that, you kill your community. So how many community centers they have that really in operation that, that provide the, the place for these small groups to go and start the meetings and stuff? Well, I think bigger, I think out of the box. I always believe that you don't have to put everything in a community center. I believe that you can encourage a group who want to build their own community center right. that they should do. Okay. Because sometimes everybody don't want to meet in the same place where everybody meets. Okay. You know, there's culture that is involved in that. You know? So those little groups do take up you or I to go and, and start these things. That's right. Uh, but it's not starting. Yes. The, the, the bottom line towards social development is planning, and the planners must now begin to, to speak with those in authority to set the infrastructure to encourage but it must not be a top-down approach. It must be a bottom-up approach. You must see where these things exist and begin to assist so that others that are looking in can now say, well, let's do what, what Faisabad is doing or let's do what Point Forte is doing or let's do what California is doing, you know? And the issue of age does not come into account. Because when you look at the international community that speak on sports or the direction of sports, it is those with the wisdom of yesterday can pass it towards tomorrow in the hands of those who are young today. So you bridge the gap. There are people who will look at you and say, but where, where does old man come from, boy? That and that old man is working with a wealth of experience and so many things that he just want to pass it on. But there's no place to pass it on. So I take my hat off to you, Steve, in what you are doing in Faisabad. I take my hat off to Fafaini, what he is doing in, 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 um, California. in California. You know? And the, the, the team, Field of Dream, 
is a reality. Your dream is in that field. Whether it be netball, basketball, football, cricket, hockey, or even golf. It's there. All uh, right, we, um, we run out of time. Um, to the sponsors and the promising kids who is out there uh, dreaming right now, keep the faith. Sponsors, they're looking forward to you making that happen for them to give them some kind of help to move forward. So we hope you, you chip in and do something. Finney and Arthur, thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank I you hope very it will much. not be the last. And you're always good people. Stay on the right track as usual. Eh? Don't let me have to come and <laughs> find you. <laughs> thank you. Find you. Yes, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, viewers, thank you for tuning in uh, every Monday night at 8 and you know, repeat on the, uh, at 1 o'clock on the Tuesday and Saturday. And uh, we have a Facebook page. You can always check us out. We have an email address. Feedersunitypt at gmail.com. You can drop us a line. This show is ended. It's going to be. Thank you.